<sighs> so I have to dedicate because of the my loyal YouTube followers. I'm gonna dedicate this double whammy to you guys. And I'm gonna get, you know, you guys are very impatient. I'm getting that vibe that you guys just wanna go and see the goodies, right? The action. So without further ado, let's go. So again, before we start, let me just make a clarification to everyone, whoever sees this video. The reason why, and everyone is always asking me, why aren't you using a tourniquet? Okay, and, and I'm glad that we're having this. I was gonna do another video, but I'm gonna go ahead and take the opportunity to, to explain a little bit. I don't use tourniquets for two reasons. Number one, more than anything, is pain. Okay, when you use a tourniquet, you're congesting the toe. Okay, so when we use a tourniquet, after the procedure, the patient feels more pain. That's why I don't use it. There may be blood, which is fine. We, there's, a, there's a big difference in two procedures that we do here or anywhere else. There's a partial nail avulsion, which is a PNA, and there's a phenol procedure, which is what you guys know, the matrixectomy, using the acid to kill the nail uh, roots, and so on and so forth. The primary reason why I don't use a tourniquet, one of my well, one of my mentors taught me, and and he was right because there were many many uh, uh, early in my career when we did hundreds of these, I noticed with or without the tourniquet that the people that had no tourniquet had less post procedural pain. Very important. A lot of people now, a lot of people do use tourniquets, and that's fine. I will use tourniquet. If we're doing a phenol procedure, the phenol procedure, yes, you cannot have any type of blood because the blood will essentially dilute the phenol. The phenol is the acid, which in turn kills the matrix. Okay, I want everyone to understand that. So it's not that I'm not using a tourniquet because of this. And if I, you cannot, and I want to be very, very clear to all my YouTube viewers. You cannot perform a phenol procedure when there is pain. When a patient presents with pain, that means that to some extent there are bad cells, okay? And when you do that procedure, you cannot push those bad cells back there. Where? Back here. Because the nail root is back there, and what else is back there? Bone! So God forbid you end up pushing those bad cells into the bone. Next thing you know, you have bone infection. And then that's a different topic of uh, uh, a different uh, uh, a different topic of conversation. We're not going to talk about that. So I I, I really hope this has uh, clarified a lot of what I do and what has uh, worked and what continues to work. Two very important things. And if you guys have any other questions about this, throw them into the thread, and I will definitely answer them. But let's go ahead and move forward. And by the way. This is a big ingrown nail as well, just like the other mammoth one that we removed, okay? Okay, just like that. And a lot of people ask me as well, over here, over here, over here. A lot of people ask me, why are you taking so much of the good nail? The problem is if you leave, if you only take two, two, uh, a little slither, it can come back, right? My job as a clinician is to eliminate the pain and prevent any future uh, infection. So that's why I like to take a little bit more than the usual. And again, every physician practices uh, their own way. I've only been practicing for 11 years and for 11 years this has worked for me and for the patients. Happy patient, happy doctor. Make sure we got a nice clear view there. Make sure we don't touch the skin there. Okay, do we have a nice clear view there? So yeah, there is there there is blood, but again, oh, this is gonna be big. This is gonna be big. This is a big nail that's in there, been there for a long time. Here we go.
<sighs> Look at this. <laughs> Let's put this. A lot of people lately have been asking me to put it, put it somewhere. Right? And now, now, guys, I want you to see something. Where is the blood? Look. So, what am I doing now? Making sure there's nothing back there. There is nothing back there. Let's move on to the second one. This one's a little bit less. Well, you know what? Let me not say anything yet. Let me not say anything because I've noticed that when you think there's just a small little nail, all of a sudden... You see this huge nail just pop out of nowhere like a Pandora box. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Here we go. Let's not break it, right? We don't want to break it. Okay. And again, as you guys can see, I was I was a little bit more overzealous on that side. <sighs> Feels already better. I already feel better for the patient. Watch this, guys. This is the key to the procedure right here. Watch this. You cannot leave this. Watch this behind. There's a little piece back here. Let me see if it broke up there. Sometimes it's just basically... Excellent. You see? No tourniquet. So now what we do... A second. Okay. I know you, uh, you uh, they're... Uh, you guys have a very short attention span. What we're gonna go ahead and do here is we're gonna just put a bandage. Like always, if you guys have any questions, throw them on whether it be Facebook, uh, YouTube. For all the followers on YouTube, you guys should follow us on Jaws Podiatry on Facebook because there's a bunch of videos in there that I haven't posted and may not get to post on the YouTube channel. Give us a like. Scroll down and enjoy. Like always, thank you for watching. JawsPodiatry.com, Jaws Podiatry Facebook. And like always, you guys continue to do what you do. I will uh, try my best to always answer all questions. Signing off live from Jaws Podiatry. Ciao!